TikTok, que pasó de antes del break. Y eh, luego vamos a tener tres presentaciones en el slot que le llamamos de Network Planning o de Planificación de Red. En este momento, entonces, me gustaría invitar a pasar a Doug Madori y a Darwin Costa. Ellos van a presentar la Lightning Talk sobre eh, un, eh, diría yo, un desarrollo muy interesante que ocurrió en los últimos días, que es la inauguración del cable SAX. Eh, que, bueno, van a ver por qué es interesante. Los dejo en manos de ellos. Adelante. Buenos días a todos. So I'm uh, Doug Midori from Oracle, and this is uh, Darwin DaCosta of Angola Cables. And we're going to talk today about a, uh, a pretty significant development with the internet, especially in this region, is the activation of the first submarine cable uh, going across the South Atlantic. So, uh, and this is so recent, this is just last week. This is why we submitted it as a lightning talk, and forgive the unpolished nature, we just put this together last night. Uh, so I... Um, Uh, it's become kind of a hobby of mine of doing internet analysis of identifying submarine cable cuts and activations and uh, most, you know, most notably in this region was the ALBA-1 cable activation to Cuba, which I spotted uh, several years ago. Something I've tried to do without any kind of uh, uh, coordination or prior to official notification by the cable operator, uh, we're usually able to spot these cables coming active. Um, and, uh, and so this was another case of that last week. Let's see, so there's been several uh, efforts to build a submarine cable across the South Atlantic. It's a uh, region, it's, a, um, it's like the last major underserved transoceanic internet path that, do, that does not have a submarine cable until last week. And there's been a, a few a cable efforts. Another one that is uh, afoot is this SAIL cable, South Atlantic Internet Link, I think. Um, They made an announcement a couple weeks ago saying the cable was uh, complete. We have seen no evidence of any change of international connectivity in Cameroon. It's supposed to go between Brazil and Cameroon. And uh, we don't believe that cable is uh, carrying traffic yet. However, last week we have evidence, ample evidence, as you'll see, uh, that the, um, uh, the SACS cable built by Angola Cables is now live and carrying traffic. So, yeah. So, buenos días a todos. Yo soy Darin Costa from Angola Cables. Eh, yo quería agradecer a la organización por esa oportunidad y también a todos los miembros de la CNIC y la CNOC. Um, and also taking now, back in English, taking the opportunity to, of, of the live streaming uh, to thank everybody from my team, which is based it, uh, in Angola, in Brazil, and in South Africa. So these guys have done a very good job, and as a team, we are, we are, we are all Uh, happy of this uh, internet development, uh, like Doug said, is the first cable connecting uh, Africa into South America, and which we will s uh, show some measurements uh, that we took last week and last night uh, from our network and also from some customers within in Africa. So, yeah, I will start with just with a global overview of our network. So, uh, Angola Cables is part of a consortium of the Monet Cable, which goes from USA down to Brazil, uh, with a total designed capacity of 6 terabits per second. Uh, Angola Cable has 20, uh, 24 terabits per second on, on that system. Uh, then we have the SACS, which will be linking Fortaleza to Luanda, uh, at the same CLS the, whereby the West African Cable lands now, which is called uh, the Sangano, Sangano Beach. And then we already operate the West African cable, which goes uh, from London all the way down to South Africa. 
Um, the system, South Atlantic cable system is designed with 40 terabits per second, and then the total designer capacity on the West cable system is five terabits per second. So going a little bit more in detail on the SAX cable, yes, uh, again, like Doug said, it is official. Today we announced actually the RFS of the SAX cable. Um, uh, it's, uh, uh, we got uh, four fiber pairs on that system, and the system will be interlinking Fortaleza again to Luanda and carrying uh, a different traffic pattern between both continents. Okay, so we did some measurements um, that I will be showing on the next slide. So I won't go through uh, over every line, but just to highlight uh, the most relevant ones, which are the yellow ones. So back then from Luanda to Miami, uh, our packets uh, were being routed uh, through Europe and we re reached Miami with something like 278 milliseconds. Uh, with SACS uh, uh, available now, we uh, uh, are reaching Miami with 128 uh, milliseconds. So there was a significant uh, reduction on the latency uh, which we were able to minimize uh, down to 150 milliseconds. So that's pretty, pretty, uh, uh, pretty important and impressive as well, uh, because there is a new path and a new route that can be uh, used by enterprise gaming, OTTs, uh, carriers, and uh, anybody who have any interesting, uh, interest in that route. So the second line is uh, the route between Fortaleza and Luanda. So back then, uh, our Portuguese community uh, in Angola uh, had around 350 milliseconds uh, from Luanda all the way up to Fortaleza, again, through uh, Europe. And we right now uh, were able to minimize that to 63 milliseconds. Okay, and we had a huge decrease, as you guys can see on the screen of uh, 287 milliseconds, which is dramatic and a very, very important for the internet development and also for the African and Brazilian uh, uh, speaking, um, Portuguese speaking community, because right now uh, two, the two continents can exchange traffic in a more directly way uh, that uh, never, we never had that before. So the last line is we we, did, we pick up the Sao Paulo, which is the one of the most interconnected, or if not the most interconnected uh, region in Brazil, uh, to Luanda. Uh, in the past, we had uh, 380 milliseconds, and then we were able to reduce that to 109 milliseconds, and then uh, you can see the result that we reduced reduced that to 271 milliseconds, which is again tremendous uh, when it comes to reducing latency. So on the next slides, uh, we're gonna show some measurements that we did on, um, uh, that Doug did on uh, some Angolan networks. And I will be showing some trace routes uh, as well when Doug is done with this, uh, this one. Okay, so I think uh, sometimes it's very helpful to look at a time series uh, just to show the dramatic of impact of the drop in latencies. And these graphs on the left, uh, these were similar to ones I posted in the blog post the day after the activation last week. Uh, now they're just extended out to a recent, uh, recent time here. But you know, in the first uh, third or so, you see latencies. These are, these are from our various servers in Brazil going to a couple of customers of Angola cables in Angola. Uh, prior uh, to the activation of the cable, um, the latencies are above 300 milliseconds, and then, you know, once we have SACs, then they drop down to about 100 milliseconds, and it's a tr pretty traumatic um, uh, drop. Obviously, it's a, it's a straightforward path as opposed to going through the US and um, Europe. What's interesting is that if we look at, uh, um, we can see the change in other locations outside of Brazil uh, with the impact of SACs looking at uh, you know, just one of their customers that we have a lot of measurements into. Uh, this is actually from Ashburn, Virginia, so uh, measurements from the United States into uh, Angola now are going across the South Atlantic uh, via this cable. Even uh, as far away as the Far East, so this is, these are uh, two graphs showing uh, measurements. You know, the y-axis is latency time is the x-axis going, coming from Tokyo and Singapore, and there is um, you know, a, a, only a slight 
improvement, but there is an improvement uh, as far as latency goes, as far as uh, um, uh, when the, the path gets a little more direct going from the United States to bounce off Brazil to go to uh, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. So yeah, um, one of the other things that we did uh, as, a, as a last slide uh, uh, was uh, uh, doing a trace uh, from Angola uh, all the way up to an IP in, uh, in Sao Paulo. So you can see that on, on, on the left side, I got some the, the yellow lines, uh, which means that the packets from Angola went all the way up to Lisbon and then to London. And the blue line uh, means that pa the packet went from our pop in London and then all the way to Boca via the North Atlantic route. Uh, and then we actually reach it on the last stop, we reach it uh, Sao Paulo uh, with a tremendous uh, latency, as you guys can see, uh, which wa this was the previous scenario be before we had uh, SACS in place. And then when, when we activated SACS, so we saw the, the, the right uh, inside picture with uh, uh, less ops on the packet. And as you can see, the first and second op, is, it's in Angola itself, it's our network in Angola. And then uh, the yellow ops were our network pops in Brazil, from Fortaleza in order to reach Sao Paulo. And then we decreased that uh, on the green bottom line with 109 milliseconds in order to receive the same content in Sao Paulo. So again, this is... Uh, a new way uh, of uh, sending packets over the Atlantic, you know. Uh, we are keen to share these uh, details with the community and we are very happy, uh, we are very happy as a team uh, that we were able to implement this subsea cable, which will definitely be a, a game changer uh, within the next uh, few years. So, thank you. Any questions? Thank you so much to both of you. Tenemos un par de un par de minutos para alguna pregunta, si la hubiera. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bueno, siguiendo con la 